Hello, hello. Today we're going to try our best not to get too many angry comments. But given our topic today, we'll see. But are you actually bad at Dead by Daylight? We're going to talk about competitiveness and why people seek to win, the illusion of control, what is considered skill, and the somewhat negative behaviours associated with sore winners. Dead by Daylight features an MMR system, which adjusts based on the player's ability to win. For survivors this refers to escaping the match, and killers victory is based on the number of survivors you sacrifice to the entity. One thing we have suggested in past videos is that this MMR system has encouraged a more competitive playstyle. So why do people have such a strong desire to win? Jane McGonagall describes a game as giving an opportunity to focus our energy with relentless optimism at something we're good at or getting better at and enjoy. In other words, gameplay is the direct emotional opposite of depression. Their writings go on to suggest that competitive gameplay shouldn't be about winning, it should be about playing harder and longer than the other team in order to have more fun. It should be, but reality sometimes differs from this. A study into the topic of escapism using video games suggested games can be a valuable tool in helping to restore a player's self-esteem. Escapism is the concept of seeking distraction from unpleasant realities, usually utilising a source of entertainment like video games. In 2020 the world experienced a set of lockdowns which provided a unique need for people to socialise and find worth from within their homes. The internet and video games are what many people turn to. Other studies have suggested that those who suffer from low self-esteem are more likely to have a less healthy relationship with competition. They have a greater need to win for the social status that comes with it or the rewards themselves. Perhaps the lockdowns are partially why there is an increasingly competitive player base in Dead by Daylight now. Studies found that both winning and losing in a competitive game can elicit rewards and motivational pathways in the brain, suggesting winning and losing can produce positive and hostile based outcomes. Players somewhat rely on winning in video games to cope with low self-esteem and also as a source of enjoyment. This may also link back to the concept of compulsion loops which we discussed in the past. The neurochemical rewards associated with winning may be a large driving factor and when denied their win might be why some players can get quite frustrated and sometimes hostile. Generally players have become increasingly driven to win and we have some reasoning to why this might be, such as increasing one's self-esteem, providing a sense of enjoyment or a compulsion to earn rewards. But is winning in DBD that impressive in the first place? As discussed in the past, Dead by Daylight is heavily reliant on RNG, with uncertainty being at the forefront of much of the game's design. This leads us to the illusion of control. This is defined as an expectancy of a personal success probability inappropriately higher than the objective probability would warrant. Basically put, people believe they have a higher chance of winning than they logically should. Langer found that people put greater value on their chosen lottery ticket numbers than that of a given set of numbers. So people inherently believed that when they chose their own numbers, their ticket held more value and more potential to win, even though statistically speaking, there is no difference. People act in ways that suggest they hold illusionary beliefs in their ability to control the outcome of chance determined games. Interestingly, another study suggests that choice does not seem to cause an illusion of control, so one's own ability to act may not be why people have such faith in their ability to win. In another study, they go on to describe that choice is merely one of many factors that can amplify an almost magical belief that there is something more to this game than random chance. What I am trying to say here is we are already predisposed to believe that we have a greater control over a situation even when it is totally random, like gambling, regardless of our ability to make choice, and Dead by Daylight is already heavily based upon random factors. Obviously it is an entirely meaningless chance and the player must often outplay their opponents if they hope to win. But sometimes random factors do help, and when survivors are teabagging at the exit door, or a killer gleefully stands over their slugged fourth kill shaking their heads, do they even consider RNG might have been on their side? So what does skillful play in Dead by Daylight even look like? I am going to separate the types of skill in Dead by Daylight into two categories, mind gaming and understanding patterns. What I mean by mind gaming is the ability to manipulate your opponent and understand their playstyle, 
so a good window fake as a survivor, or knowing when not to respect the pallet as the killer. Essentially it's learning the tales of player behaviour, and adapting your playstyle to win, and arguably it's the most skill based element of Dead by Daylight. Though there is another skill set, understanding patterns. This refers to detecting regularities in sets of units. So knowing when and where to point the flashlight, getting one more use out of a loop before dropping that pallet, understanding the angle of a huntress hatchet and so on, it's essentially maths and seeing patterns. The difference between the two is mind gaming is a skill which refines and adapts to each individual match, whereas patterns are repeatable behaviours you utilise in every match. Linderoff wrote a paper named It is not hard, it just requires having no life, computer games and the illusion of learning. It describes how players are motivated partially based on the illusion of success, and how the player does not have to develop any talent, but is rewarded for just spending time in the game and doing very simple tasks. A good example of this is a survivor completing a generator. This is not intended to diminish the skill of learning a pattern. A good blending of these skills is a solid flashlight save. There is the mind gaming side of being in the right place at the right time and biding that time for the killer to initiate the pickup. Then there is the pattern element of positioning your survivor, pointing your flashlight at the right spot and at the right time to get the save. But some of these patterns provide a feeling of skill even though they are relatively simple tasks. So let's discuss some. Decisive Strike A great defence to being tunnelled but sometimes used aggressively by survivors. Blocking the killer with a borrowed time protection here, they buy their teammate enough time to escape and leave the killer minimal choice but to go for them. Next they jump into a locker. Now the killer is forced to open it or leave them be. If they choose to open the locker, the survivor activates Decisive Strike. A simple skill check and they go on to waste more of the killer's time as they escape their grasp. Effective but requires minimal skill. Face camping Bubba I'd hope people who play like this are under no illusion they are particularly skilled at the game. The pattern here is relying on survivors to want to unhook their teammates. With Insidious in hand usually, they patiently wait for their moment to chainsaw through an unhooked and unhooking survivor. <laughs> a fairly cheap tactic and probably the most boring and low skilled way to play killer, but it can certainly provide the illusion of success when 4k'ing a solo squad. Dead Hard like Decisive Strike, a get out of jail free card, often a perk indicating you've been outplayed by the killer. You simply press E and get enough distance to the next vault or pallet. Unfortunately, a pretty much guaranteed way to extend any loop, which needs virtually no skill to use. I think my main problem with this perk is that a successful mind game win for the killer is usually disregarded because of this perk, but it still feels very satisfying to use. Nurse a huge part of DBD is looping, and the majority of skill is mind gaming within those loops. Nurse doesn't need to do that. You learn the pattern of blinking roughly to a survivor's position, press M1, lunge, and hit. Now there is a skill, and by no means am I saying there isn't any, but once you learn the pattern, the game becomes easy mode. I will quote the title of Lindroff's paper once more for Nurse. It is not hard, it just requires having no life. There is an illusion that Nurse is difficult to play. Though having played her myself and seeing her as one of the most played killers, I disagree. Once you get a rough grasp of blinking, the game is much easier, but the illusion of skill is very present, as it can still feel very satisfying to hit a survivor with a blink, even though you're avoiding the most challenging part of the game. Now I actually have no issue with these perks or killers, and how satisfying they are to use is a testament to the game's design, but what I do take issue with is how players act and perceive themselves after using them. Bad manners, often referred to as BMing, is when a player intentionally exhibits obnoxious and negative behaviours to other players in a way to disrespect and irritate them. The most common examples of this are survivors using crouching to teabag at the killers, flashlight clicking excessively, nodding and waiting at the exit doors to be seen to escape. From the killer's perspective, it's hitting on hook, shaking their heads and slugging and bleeding out survivors rather than hooking them. A paper looking into the influence of anonymity on player behaviour found that anonymity in online games lead players to disinhibit more and hence gamers engage in antisocial behaviour. This is reminiscent of an old Penny Arcade article named The Great Internet Fuckwad Theory. This suggested that internet users display unsocial tendencies when interacting with others as a result of anonymity and having an audience, turning them into a fuckwad. There's something about this GG easy mentality after winning that I find to be one of the most ugliest attitudes in Dead by Daylight. It reminds me of League of Legends, which is often referred to as having one of the most toxic communities in all of gaming. 
I would suggest that BMing may indicate a person with low self-esteem and an unhealthy relationship with competition, as discussed earlier. So if you happen to bump into one, yes they're annoying, but they're likely not having a great time with Dead by Daylight in the greater scheme of things anyway. We likely pursue a feeling of winning for our own self-esteem and enjoyment. We are pre-programmed to feel we have more control over winning than sometimes warranted. Dead by Daylight also gives us a collection of simple tasks which can often feel mistakenly skill-driven to enact. And we have an environment where when some people do win, they seek to needlessly ridicule the other side, maybe to inflate their false sense of social status. So overall, whether you're good or bad at the game in terms of skill isn't for me to say really. I've given my thoughts on mind gaming and understanding patterns, but for me, being good or bad at DBD goes beyond this. Dead by Daylight, in my opinion, is a casual social game which brings horror fans together. I believe what makes a person good or bad at the game is their ability to be fun, and being fun doesn't always rely on them being the most skilled. How many games do you remember where you simply won? I'm going to refer back to McGonagall's quote, Competitive gameplay shouldn't be about winning. It should be about playing harder and longer than the other team, in order to have more fun. This to me is what makes someone good at Dead by Daylight. My fondest moments in DBD are the competitive back and forths, or the outright hilarious ones which sometimes are just memeing around. In fact, you know what I miss? The snowmen. So what I'm trying to say is, maybe being good at Dead by Daylight is about being fun to interact with, more so than just escaping or getting four kills. But what do you think? Is being good at Dead by Daylight all about how efficiently you can get the 4K or smash out those generators and escape? Or is there more to it than just winning? Thanks for watching, and why not show off your own YouTube skills by liking and subscribing for more content like this? Have an amazing day, everyone.